Hi, it's been about a day and my parts have dried completely. So now I can get together and pin these or actually uh, skewer these on on my holders. So what? these are just bamboo skewers with alligator clips. You can find these at any um, electronic store or even hardware store. Now once I have them on skewer, I'm going to put them onto a but just a wood board with the holes drilled in it. This uh, I created these so that it's, easy, it's in lieu of using styrofoam because it's a lot cleaner. I don't have to keep sticking and create more and more holes in the styrofoam. So I've been using these for a couple of years now. All I'm doing is grabbing onto the you know a piece of the part that's hidden and have them held. This makes this so much easier to paint. Now for some of these parts that don't have a pin to hold on to, I'm just going to use a skewer and insert into said hole and there, I'm done. Now for, there, granted there's, you know, there's a pin I could grab onto here and hold onto this like so, but it's a little flimsy and it's a short pin and this might, you know, you know be off with. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my drill and carefully drill a new pilot hole. And with this hole drilled out, I could insert a skewer. And there we have a nice way of holding on to that part. And I drilled the hole in a spot where it's going to be covered by something. For these parts, I'm just going to take the alligator clip and slip it in like so. And this will hold it onto it decently. Some of these parts are a little bit more difficult to hold onto. So maybe pick a different alligator clip. Nah, it's not working that well. Basically, I'm using the, the friction of the two tabs here to hold on to it against the alligator clip. And that should give me enough clearance to paint the rest of this entire trouser piece. For these four parts, I'm going to go ahead and glue them in place. I understand that it's probably for casting reasons that this was separated out. For this, I'm using 5-minute epo uh, epoxy. And all you have to do is you mix equal parts of this glue. This stuff smells horrible. Gonna measure out roughly equal parts of this. I usually do this on a scratch piece of paper. 
or a you know, cardboard note paper. I just throw away after this is dried. I like using uh, epoxy glue because it's got a little bit more tensile strength to it as opposed to um, super glue or your CA glue. CA glue will dry will dry instantly, but once it dries, there's a little bit of brillness to it. So you could it'll dry quick and it'll get a nice bond, but a little bit of flex to it and it'll snap right off. So I'm just gonna set that in here. Press that down, wipe out some of the excess. The question now is how am I going to how am I going to hold these parts? I could go ahead and use this to hold this on the side, but that um, this piece is doesn't isn't a good you know doesn't hold well. So what I do have are these skewers with um with uh, duct tape mass uh, rolled up. Uh, how I do this, I'm just gonna stick this on here like so and it holds on perfectly fine. Now, how are these made? I'm glad you asked. So I have, you know, a stick with some um, of the duct tape on here and I'm just gonna add to this. All I do is do one wrap, close it up, and from here, I just wrap it around itself. Now this becomes very, very useful for um, parts that have nothing for these things to grip, say like a flat piece. Now I'm gonna roll this a couple of times. Cut away the excess. Now, as I'm painting along and using this, each time I'm done painting it, I'll just rip off the layer, exposing um, more stickiness to it and keep using this until it runs down. Now this works very, very well, nicely for flat parts. So imagine if this was a flat piece, like this, uh, this nub wasn't here. All you had to do is stick this on here and paint. Stick this in here. And these parts are ready to be primed. Now that my parts are on the skewers, I can go ahead and prime. This is my initial priming stage, and I'm going to use a um, Mr. Resin surfacer, and which I've dropped into these bottles with a couple of ball bearings to mix it up. And I just pour this into my airbrush and go from there. Grab a glove. So I don't paint my hands. My airbrush press pressure for this is about, it's fairly high, so I'm gonna drop it down to about 20 PSI. Work nicely. Mr. Surfacer 1000, I don't know. 
I know that when I mix these two, they don't play well together. So they're obviously formulated differently. Apparently, Mr. Resin Primer grabs onto the resin better than just the Mr. Surfacer. Let's start with a small piece. So off the bare pla off the bare plastic or bare resin, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray a light misting coat. At about this distance, which is eh, four, two, three or four inches away. So you can see that it's gotten slightly grayer and the little dots of the primer is on the surface. Now this acts as a in-between for the dry surface and the paint to adhere to. If I went in and just sprayed directly, uh, the paint will not have anything to grab onto and it'll end up pooling and splattering and it'll have a kind of a mess. So once this initial um, mist layer is on there, I could go in and spray a little heavier. And it'll, I, I won't have that issue. I'm also spraying closer and I won't have that issue of paint not sticking to the surface. Now one of the paint techniques that I wanna, want you to notice is that the surface is just getting kind of glossy wet. And that's where I stop painting. So I want it to look about like this, and I'll stop. Any more, and the paint will start to get a little too thick and start to pull. Now I'm gonna grab another part here, and you'll see the comparison between the prime piece and the, the white piece. And if you look closely, you can see if I have any sanding mistakes or if the, the panel lines or not panel lines if the mold lines are still there which I could still see a little bit of a mold line right here so this will help me refine the sanding process and surface prep in this again nice light misting layer over everything so you see the little dots and spray a heavier layer on here. So it just gets right about to that glossiness. It will dry flat, but you want that kind of a wet look to the paint right before it starts pooling. This will take a little bit of practice to get this technique down, but once you get it down it's pretty easy. So there we have this piece. And you see where I didn't bother with the with the mold lines on, on the piece that has something connected to it because no one's gonna be able, no one's gonna see that. And you see where the mold line goes across the part is pretty much gone. Now at any time when you're spraying spraying or when you're airbrushing or spraying paint and you have a dust particle land on your part, stop painting immediately and just put that down. Let it dry and either take a paper towel or a light uh, sanding pad like my 320 yellow pads and just slightly um, wipe away that, uh, that dust mark or that piece of dust after this is dried for maybe 10-20 minutes. So about the time I get through painting the rest of the parts, this will be dry and I can get to taking care of that um, that issue if I had the dust land on it.
grabbing this piece after I've painted you know two previous pieces this is pretty much dry and you see that it's not shiny and to the touch it might feel a little bit rough that's fine I could go in with a high grit of sanding uh, sanding sandpaper and just kind of smooth that out before I get to actual Here we have that piece that I puttied with the light curing putty here and here, and I'm going to prime over this. Now you can see that as I painted this, the putty has a uh, disappeared. This is generally a good sign that you did a good putty job. See the hole is no longer there and the part looks fairly seamless from where the putty was filled. Now again with that light curing putty uh, all you need to do is let this dry up maybe about an hour or two and you can re-putty, re-sand, and continue on if you didn't completely grab that, uh, fix that hole. That makes for a very, very quick putty-sand prime process. Whoops. So, I just dropped this part while I'm painting. So, what happens now is I'm just going to let it dry. See some of these areas where it kind of got messed up a little bit. I'm going to lightly sand this and I'm going to come back and paint this. Um, Right now, if I keep adding more paint, it's just going to make this uh, even messier that I'm going to have to end up stripping the whole part, but this is still salvageable. So I'm just going to set this aside and come back to it later. So this part has had a little bit of time to dry and I'm just going to take my sanding pad and lightly smooth out some of the rough areas like so and go back and paint away right on top of this. Hopefully this time when I do this, it won't drop. Whoops. Uh. Uh, 
was dry enough that I could go ahead and not worry too much about that. And with the exception of those, um, those two hammer pieces, um, this kit is primed.